today I have in a really good first release from the Swedish brand Alato Watches. The watch is the Arvit, which translates to legendary in English. And it's one of those watches that ticks a lot of the boxes we want to see in a good everyday sporty, but at the same time, dressy watch. So it's a very versatile watch. Big thanks to Peter, the owner of the brand and designer of the watch for sending this in for a few days for us to check out. So let's do just that and take a look at the watch. So these will be coming out late May by way of a Kickstarter campaign. They're going to be available in three colors. There is the black with gold gilt I have here today. There's a really nice looking blue version and a burgundy that looks sharp too. There is a stretch goal with at least one other color option possibly coming as well. So the watch is drawing heavily on that vintage styling, but the owner, Peter, has a background in civil engineering and architecture. He was inspired by the Rouleau Triangle, which was invented by Franz Rouleau and is used in things from architecture to car engines. It's a curved triangle with a constant width, no matter where you're measuring the diameter. On the watch, they're using a concave version of it in a few different parts of the design, including the markers at the 3, 6, 9, and 12. The dial on the watch has two layers. The center layer has a really fine guilloche pattern that looks great. We have a lotto printed up top and Arvit automatic with the water resistance down on the lower section. So solid water resistance of 100 meters for a watch like this. The text, by the way, is going to be just slightly bigger on the production models, just so some of the holes or spaces within some of the letters can be printed more clearly. On the outer raised section of the dial is the applied markers, and those triangular markers, I think, look pretty cool. We've got the minute track at the very edge, and the second and minute hands reach right out to the markers. The hour hand just to the edge of the inner dial, so all the proportions are spot on, and it's a really good dial layout overall. The owner also has mentioned to me, though, the tip of the minute hand will be just a bit wider to allow for more loom. And speaking of loom, it is tops. They're using BGW-9, and this is about as good as it gets for BGW-9. It's as solid and even more so than a lot of divers out there. So A plus on the loom with this one. The case design brings to mind vintage Seiko to me. It's a good looking case with that broad polished area between the brushed case sides and the top of the lugs. It's got a slight curve to the side profile. We also have drilled lugs there as well. Through the display case back is the Miyota 9039 working away. And how about that custom rotor with the same shape as the markers? It's a neat look and it actually has a trick up its sleeve. It's not a practical one, but was done more for the fun of it. And that is, it is loomed at the three corners. Yeah, it doesn't really serve a purpose, but hey, why not? The movement is a 24 joule movement beating at 28,800 vibrations per hour with a power reserve of approximately 42 hours. The crown is a signed screw down crown and has curves to the grip that are meant to sort of replicate the curves of those markers. The design is actually great for grips and no problem with winding the watch. Winding action is good and the crown threads back in smoothly. So far, there's not been a lot to complain about, especially for the price, which we'll get to soon. But the one thing that could be improved on, and maybe it's something that could be addressed, is the end links. It doesn't hugely affect wearability on my wrist, but it will on smaller wrists. The end links are male. They look like two links, but from the underside, you can see it's one piece. That brings the lug to lug out to 50.1 millimeters, which is pretty long for the size of the watch. This is a prototype, so maybe that's something that can be looked at. The rest of the bracelet is just fine. We've got screwed links for sizing. The bracelet tapers down to 16 millimeters at the clasp, and the clasp is double signed 
here on the inner part and on the outer. We even have an on-the-fly adjustment system. So just a quick push of the button here will extend it out and it ratchets back in as your wrist size changes throughout the day. It's a really good bracelet, but if that end link can be changed, that would make it all that much better. I'll hit you with the numbers here, and as far as case size, the watch comes in at a case width of 37.8 millimeters. The lug-to-lug -lug without the end links is 45.2 millimeters. Lug opening is 20 millimeters, and the thickness is 11.3 millimeters, including the sapphire crystal, which is treated with five layers of AR on the underside. And here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And man, other than those end links, this is a really well put together watch, especially for a first release. Solid fit and finish. And I just really enjoy the overall look, the style of the watch. Cost for these is going to start at $395 USD for Super Early Bird and will eventually get to a full MSRP of just under $460. The pricing, especially under 400 is not bad at all. For a first release, again, I think they've done really well with it. So let me know what you think. I know the owner would love to hear some feedback on the watch. Link to their site and to the campaign will be in the description below. Appreciate you taking a few minutes to stop by, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.